Hey everyone, it's Raymond, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm super excited to share my first impressions on the new M4 iPad Pro. This powerhouse of a tablet has been all the rage in the tech world, and I finally got my hands on one. So let's dive in and see if it lives up to the hype. This year, Apple has given the iPad several significant updates to align it more with its current design language. They gave the M4 iPad Pro a sleeker, more modern design with round corners similar to what they did with the iPhone 15 Pro models. But we all know Apple and how they like to give us something unexpected, something more than what the competition is offering. And this year for the M4 iPad Pros, one of those unexpected features is just how thin they were able to get this device. The 13 inch M4 iPad Pro now measures in at just 5.1 millimeters thin, making it the thinnest Apple device ever. And let me tell you, it's thin. When holding the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro in your hands, it feels like you're holding just a thin sheet of metal and glass. It's impressive how thin they were able to get this iPad. Along with that thinness, the iPad Pro has also shed some weight and has gone down to just 579 grams, making it 25% lighter than the previous M2 model. Looking at the iPad through the camera doesn't do it justice. It has to be one of the lightest devices I've held at its size. The combination of just how thin and lightweight the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro is makes it a device I wouldn't mind using for an extended period of time. Whether that's using it for productivity, like in Notion, to plan out these videos, going over some of my online classes, or just laying back and relaxing while watching the latest episode of one of the many anime shows I'm currently watching. Speaking of watching my shows, another one of the significant updates made to the M4 iPad Pro models is its display. For the first time ever, Apple has given the iPad Pros an OLED display and has dubbed it the Ultra Retina XDR display. The Ultra Retina XDR incorporates a newer type of display technology, Tandem OLED, where they take two OLED panels and overlay them to improve the overall brightness of the OLED display. So now, not only do you get dark inky blacks with those rich, vibrant colors, but you also get better overall brightness as well. With the Tandem OLED technology, the Ultra Retina XDR display is able to reach up to 1000 nits of brightness in SDR and up to 1600 nits in HDR. This makes for a very bright OLED display that you can use in the comfort of your own home or out and about in direct sunlight without any issue. The display has also grown in size ever so slightly, going from a 12.9 display to a 13 inch display. Well, Maybe grown in size isn't the correct phrase. Overall, it's still a pretty large display, but thanks to how thin and lightweight it is, it's still a breeze to use and to enjoy. Another new option Apple introduced this year is the ability to get a nano textured glass display to help with glare while using your M4 iPad Pro. In order to get this on your iPad, you have to get at least a one terabyte model iPad Pro. I personally opted not to get the nano textured glass but I can see the benefits it does provide. Overall, this is definitely the nicest display I currently own and I haven't been able to put it down since I got it. With its rich and vibrant colors, awesome portability, it is the device to use to enjoy content. Have you picked up one of the new M4 iPad Pros? If so, which model and why? Comment down below as I would love to hear how you guys are using your brand new iPads. The cameras have also received a few minor updates. The front facing camera previously positioned at the top of the iPad in portrait orientation has now been moved and upgraded to a landscape position 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. This location definitely seems more appropriate for the camera, providing a better angle for those crucial video calls. On the back of the iPad, we have the same 12 megapixel wide camera, but the ultra wide camera from the previous model is missing. In its place, Apple has added an adapted true tone flash to improve the quality of the documents scanned using the rear facing 12 megapixel camera. There were rumors that better overall cameras like the ones found on the iPhone 15 Pro models are making their way to the new iPad Pros. However, we ended up losing a camera instead 
Well, not many people are recording videos off of their iPads, so losing a seldom used camera seems justifiable. One thing that came as a bit of a surprise, which really didn't leak until closer to the Apple event, was that the new iPad Pros would be skipping the M3 chip altogether. The iPad Pros were going to be the first Apple product to receive the latest Apple Silicon, the M4. At first, I didn't believe the rumors, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense, the more I got excited for the brand new iPad Pros. First, the iPad Pros hadn't been updated in over 18 months at that point, and the M3 had been out for several months as well. So why would Apple put a chipset that's on its way out in a product they just released and may not update again for up to another year or so? Second, according to several reports, the M3 chipset were built on a limited run 3 nanometer technology that was already going to be replaced by a second generation 3 nanometer chip that would be even more efficient and have greater yields as well. So it made plenty of sense, in my opinion, that Apple would forego the M3 chip and jump straight to the M4. But what made me most excited about this jump can be summed up in two letters, AI. The M4 was heavily rumored to be built with AI in mind and although not a lot of AI features were announced with the launch of the M4 iPad Pro, WWDC is just around the corner. So after watching the Let Loose event and seeing Apple not only introduce their thinnest product ever, but also equip it with the most advanced display yet, the OLED Ultra Retina XDR display, and top it all off with their rumored AI-focused M4 chip, I knew I had to give it a try. Oh, and yes, this is actually my very first iPad ever. I mean, my kids have iPads, but I never bought an iPad for myself. With having an iPhone and a MacBook, I didn't see a need for an iPad until now. So far, I've been impressed with the 13-inch M4 iPad Pro. Its display is amazing, and I can spend hours watching content on it. It's quick and snappy when opening and closing apps, browsing the web, doing some admin work, and even taking some online classes as well. The thin and light form factor make it a pleasure to use. But with WWDC just around the corner, I can't help but think and look forward to all that's going to be announced. What do you think is going to be announced for the iPad at WWDC? Mac OS for the iPad? A revamped iPad OS? Comment down below and let's see what everyone's thoughts are. Stay tuned for my full review of the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro after I've had some time to really try it out and put it through its paces. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.